No, you can just uh, drape it over the other cover of those chairs here. So you said that you're uh, you played a little bit. Yeah, I played like uh, my first year in college, so almost ten years ago. Okay, and then I really recently just started playing again because uh, one of my friends moved back from New York and mm -hmm. he's a big pool head. Okay, so I'm kind of playing again. All right, over at uh, Crown Billiards in Oh, Saturday. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, in fact I was just there last night. Oh, okay. playing league. So. Oh, okay. okay. So small problem. Cool. Uh, who's your friend? Uh, Neil. Uh, Neil. Yeah, he's not in the league or anything. We oh, just we just okay. go there and shoot around. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if you go there on a Monday through Thursday night, you'll you'll oh, okay. encounter league players there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. League starts about seven thirty, finishes around nine thirty, ten o'clock. Oh, okay. So. Right, cool. You say you don't have your uh, your own equipment? No, I figured like let me learn fundamentals and all mm -hmm. that, and then maybe ask you as well. Sure. Have recommendations on you know, the brands and like I don't know, looking online there's like the shaft wings and all this other stuff. So yeah. uh, their cues are, are typically um, standard length. I've got three different ones here. Okay. You can see that they're all pretty standard over there. Yeah. Um, they do make longer shaft lengths. Right. Um, I do have another one, another shaft for this one. This is a, a predator cue. Okay. Um, I have a Z shaft, which is actually 30 inches. These are typically 28 inches. So, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a little bit longer, but typically they're between. Uh, these are between, I think, um, 58, and 60 inches. Okay. And then I saw like on like if you go to the place, places like the houses at 19, 20, yeah. 21. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 19 is pretty much like middle of the road. Some okay. people like a heavier stick. Yeah, a uh, heavier stick is um, you can make have the stick do more of the work with it when it's heavier. Okay. You don't have to really you don't you never want to manhandle, you know you never want to force your shot. Okay. Um, but a heavier stick for some people, some people like to break with a heavier stick. This is okay. my break tool right here. Oops. And you can feel. So this is a okay. standard 19 ounces right here. Right. You can feel this one's about 17. Yeah, it's a little lighter. A lot lighter. Yeah. So. You want less weight on your break, or is this a preference? When I well, there's a lot of there's different schools of thought. I don't know which yeah. one is is absolutely correct. Yeah. Um. So with a heavier cue, you, you know, when it hits the ball, um, obviously it's going to kind of slow down when it hits the ball and transfer a lot of its power to right. the ball itself, right? So with a heavier cue, there's less of that slowdown. It just just you know barrels. So it's like a Mack truck hitting the instead of yeah, uh, instead of an it. SUV, right? Yeah. So with a lighter cue, you can get more acceleration. Okay. Right? So the question there is, do you want the heavier cue to try to kind of transfer more of the kinetic energy to the ball? Or do you want a lighter cue where you're going to be able to accelerate more mm -hmm. and have more speed when the, by the time it hits it? Got it. So um, there have been a lot of tests done where, um, you know, they have, they've had pros try all the different Types, you know, um, all the different weights with different tips and different, you know, a lot of different, a lot of variables. Right. And it comes down to, you know, most brakes are around 20 miles per hour mm -hmm. and it doesn't change it that much. Got it. Um, oh, like the weight, regardless of the weight. Right, regardless of the weight. Yeah. Got it. So, I don't know. Just I like, like the lighter one. I'm used to it. So. Yeah, I used to play with like the heavier 21 or 22, mm -hmm. but I find like I have like more control if I do a 19. Yeah. So I think I'm maybe want to try a lighter one. Yeah. And what's great is if you get, you know, depending on what your budget is like, but yeah. uh, the Predator series, most of the Predators, um, you can remove this butt and inside there, there's, it's like a weighted thing there's, or... there's threaded weights in there. Okay. Cool. Bolts. And they're made from steel. They're made from aluminum. They're, you know, different, yeah. different lengths and different, different materials to change the weight. I took almost all of them out to make this one. This one's actually about, 16.9 inches. Oh, you took all of it out. I took all the weights out. Okay. This one I haven't touched. Yeah. So this one's like 19, 19.1. Okay. And is there a difference between like, you know, baseball bats, like aluminum versus wood? Is that the same for pool? There is. There okay. is. Um, you've got, so I've got, with these three, this one here is a uh, carbon fiber. Okay. Um, a lot this more is expensive. 19, right? This is, yes. Yeah, okay. um, that's carbon fiber shaft. Okay. Um, 
there's a little bit less deflection. So, so what is a shaft? Like the bottom. The part shaft is, is the this, top part. This, the top half. Yeah. This is the butt. This is the shaft. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the part that they separate, of course. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this is a Q-Tech Q. Uh, it's a maple shaft, but it's a it's laminated. Got um, and Does that matter lamination? Or? Um, not really. Um, what I what I really like is a consistent feel. Right. Um, when if you don't use a glove mm -hmm. and you're in a pool room and it's rainy out or yeah. it's, it's humid in there, right, right. whatever, you know, you start to get some stickiness in yeah. your hands a little bit. What I like about the carbon fiber is I, I rarely feel that. Okay. Plus I wear a glove. You wear a glove, okay. So I'm used it's to very like consistent. It being like chalk somewhere in the room and you just like chalk your hands. That yeah, thing? that's uh that's powder. Powder, sorry, yeah. Yeah, the chalk chalk and powder are two different things. Chalk is what you put to the uh, on the on the tip. Okay. Uh, the powder is it's usually like in a solid cone yeah. form. And that's a it's that just a way. it's just a um, solidified powder. Yeah. Okay. You can put that on the you, you get that on your hands, you put too much, you get it on the table, table. Gets, it gets Got yeah, it. yeah. So I mean that will help. If you know mm -hmm. you have no no other, if you're just using the house cues, yeah, and you don't have a glove, then that stuff will work well. Okay. But um, I have seen some people that have like a little bottle of the talcum powder and they put oh, okay. them on really the table, and every once in a while they just dab into it and kind of just to got it, just to keep the moisture away. And you're saying with the carbon fiber, you don't need any. Yeah, the carbon fiber, um, you can feel it. It's it's super smooth. Okay. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't, it it doesn't uh, hold on to the oils and right. dirt and all that stuff. Like you can feel this one here. This one's a really old cue, so it's got a few dings and right. nicks in it. This is this one I've had probably three or four years. No dings, no nicks, perfectly smooth. Like wow. it, like like the day you know, it came out. This one here has a couple of uh, nicks, not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, so this one here is going to run you right now. This is a QTEC. Right. Q Tech runs you probably right now about two to four hundred dollars. Okay. Um, that's a kind of a middle of one. They do make cheap player cues, but right. I mean, if you're gonna play with those, play with the ones in the in the four wheel. Right. Okay. If you're gonna invest in a stick, I I I would get something. Pay a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, get something that's that's a decent stick. This is probably bottom of the line of of the where you're starting to get into the decent. Right. This is a Q-Tech as well? Or? This is not. This is a custom Q. Oh, okay. Um, this is a one of a kind. This is um, this is made by a guy. I won it in a, in a raffle at one of the at the uh, one of the tournaments I was. Oh, at. wow. Okay. So it's uh, um, uh, I always forget his name. Jim Pierce. Pierce. Yes, Jim Pierce um, made this Q. So it's kind of cool because it's a one of a kind leather wrap. They make a leather wrap. This one's more of a. Um, I think it's a rubberized. It's kind of like a solid rubber wrap. Got it. Uh, they make some that are no wraps, similar to. Well, this is a jump cue, but it's kind of like this. It's like there's no wrap on it. Okay. It's just solid. Right. And then, uh, and then they make the linen wraps. Mm. You don't see those as much these days. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a linen wrap. That's a rubber wrap, I believe. Okay. So, so you can mix and match like different shops and bunches. You can. But they do make different joints, so okay. you'll see that on this one, it's a quick release joint. Okay. Right, so it's called Unilock. Um, but if you look at the QTEC, QTEC has their own proprietary oh, so they joint. Okay, so the the threading and the size on this one is actually different than most others. But they do have probably eight or ten. Mm -hmm. Different um, standard sizes that different Q man manufacturers use. Right. So a lot of times, like, like you could have a Q Tech, but you want to buy a, a Predator, a really nice Predator Z shaft or something oh, like that. Okay. You can order it with the proper threading. So, okay. But yeah, they're they're different threads. I don't remember what was on that one, but. And when you buy a Q, it's like they give you both pieces, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, that one I don't even know how much it's worth. It's, okay. Uh, like I said, it's so a one of one. Yeah. This one, uh, fourteen hundred, I believe oh, we got okay. it for, but it'll sell. Yeah, this one's uh, actually out of circulation now. This is the, it's the black. carbon fiber one. This is carbon fiber. It's a Predator Black. Oh, okay. B L A K. Um, they have a whole line of different different patterns and 
But um, this is a black 3-2, I believe, and right now we're on the black 4s. So I don't like this one anymore, but this one will run you around $15,000. And one, I, I assume they last a couple of years? Oh, yeah. They, I mean, they last a long, long time. Oh. And, uh, you know, you keep them in a case. I have a couple there. Oh, cool. Um, but, yeah, and you, as you saw, the, the shaft on this one is just... <laughs> I've gotten angry a couple of times and smacked it on the table, but and nothing, nothing but, happened. Yeah, nothing, no dings, no, no dents. Awesome. I mean, you can pop the tip off if you do that too much. Or try to try not to <laughs> sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, it's an emotional game sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's th these things will last a long time. I even had this one. We haven't really used it too much, actually. Aurora uses this one. This is her cue. Oh. But um, this one, I've had. Since before I moved out here to California 12 years ago. So. Oh, where were you? Cincinnati. Oh, go on. I grew up here, joined the Navy, and then after the Navy, I lived in the Cincinnati area Got it. for about 15 years before I moved out here. Okay. So you're welcome to use either one of these if you like. Uh, oh, it's just, uh, yeah. This one's like one of them. I don't want to damage it. It's all right. We're not going to damage it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like you just to. to uh, shoot a rack of balls, and I'm just going to observe and watch. And I'm going to look. I'm really not looking. I don't care if you make balls or whatever. Right. I'm looking more the fundamentals. Um, what we're looking for is uh, your bridging, mm -hmm. your your grip, and your and your um, your back arm. Yeah. How how they're lined up. Your stance mm -hmm. when you line up for the shot, um, and the stroke. Got it. So we're just kind of looking at all those things, and we'll focus on those first. We'll see if there's anything that needs to be worked on or needs to be tweaked. Yeah. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, go for it. Help yourself some water. Or yeah, of course. Whatever you like, yeah. Oh, what's this? Oh, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, that's a, that's a um, this protects the cloth. Oh, okay, okay. So oh, is it like when you I, when I'm practicing and I'm breaking I if you want to break nine ball breaks all day long yeah uh, I'll put this down just to protect you see that it doesn't this these are like burns from the uh, from where the, the shaft hits oh uh, and then as the ball jumps and kind of comes into the rack you can it see like bruises it, it, it yeah it burns the table burns oh, okay. the cloth a little bit you can see I have very little burns here yeah. because I use this otherwise you'd see all kinds of things got it when you go into a pool hall most of the time what you'll see is You'll see a burn line mm -hmm. similar to this one right here, over there, and then all along here because people are just you know got it moving the ball back and forth. So. Is this the same length that crown? This is a seven foot bar table. Okay. I actually bought this from Sacramento Billiards, um, oh, Oscar okay. Dominguez's uh, pool room. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a great table, diamond table. But, yeah. Uh, the ones cool. a crown are nine foot tables. Okay. So I was wondering. And then all league is nine foot, or it just depends. Is that uh, like league games or guys you want to play? It depends. Uh, there's other leagues that that actually go that are actually a traveling league where each team is in a different bar. Oh, and, okay. And usually those will be the bar tables. Or something right, like that. right. So it just really depends. In this particular league, this is an in-house league. It's all at Crown. Yeah. And it's always on those days. So. I, uh, You take ball in hand and just oh, shoot whatever you like. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not worried about your game right now.
How long did you play before before you uh, uh I played a lot like my first year of college in twenty thirteen. Mm-hmm. And then I just stopped and then I started playing again a lot, say October, like twice a week at Crown. Okay. Just with the same friend. Okay. Have to go on. All right. So the fundamentals, you heard me talk about um, focusing on the fundamentals, you hear a lot of people talk about. Um, so there's really four major parts to it. Um, the first one is going to be your stance. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it looks like you've got it down pretty good. Uh, basically what you want is you want your back foot to be aligned with the shot. Go ahead and grab that. Hold on to that stick. Um, come on. Yes. All right. So, so you want your back foot to be in line with the shot. Okay. So once you have the line, back foot's right there. And it doesn't matter if the foot is pointed in any direction. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. There, and you'll find that as you're looking at even the pros, if you watch a lot of the, if you watch watch a lot, watch a lot of pros like on YouTube, yeah, you'll see that some of them, um, Allison Fisher for one, she actually yeah. faces, and she she played this, yeah, right. It's because she's a snooker player. She oh, she, okay. she grew up on snooker, okay. and on snooker you have a twelve foot table, so you're just so playing. you're leaning over the table a lot, yeah. right? So you get used to just. Because you can get a lot closer to the shot this way yeah. than you can if you have to turn your head. Got it. So, um, and then there are some people that have a very close stance. I'm actually working on mine. Yeah. Um, I'm finding that typically what I usually teach people is about a semi, about a 45 degree stance. But that doesn't really work for me too well. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm too open this way. Uh, right. And I don't feel like I don't feel like this is naturally. So what I do is I shift myself a little bit. Yeah. Like this. This is where I feel more comfortable. And you can see that my my feet are almost in line with the shot, both of them. Okay. It doesn't really matter where your left foot is, whatever feels comfortable. As as you'll notice my right foot is in line with the shot. Got it. And so once I plant the back stick, I can't readjust the line. You uh, can, you just get back up and yeah. Like I have to move my feet basically. Yeah. 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 So you want to get down to a point where you're comfortable and you feel like you're aligned with the shot. We'll talk about the line and all of that yeah. and, and the aim. But right now, just your back foot should be right underneath your stick okay. when you're when you're on the line of your shot. Right? Got it. So in, in left foot, again, you have a more open stance, you can do that. If you have a more closed stance, that's fine. Whatever works for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you really want a stance that's going to keep your arm. It's going to allow your arm, which should be perfect, should be straight up and down, right? Okay. So, 
if it's away from your body, mm -hmm. that's better than if you're like, beating with your head. Uh, you don't want to be. So it's better. To have so the gap between your hip and your stick doesn't necessarily matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. As matter. long as you're perpendicular. Yeah, your back arm. Your back arm should be. So that's your foot, mm -hmm. your shoulder, sure. your elbow. Mm -hmm. Those are all in that same line. Got it. Right. And with your back arm straight up and down, yeah, you have a little pendulum swing. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. If it's curled in, mm -hmm. then you're, you can see what happens to the stick. It's really hard to keep it straight. Mm -hmm. And then if it's out, same thing. Okay. So if it's straight up and down, then you're all if everything's on the same line, then it never leaves that line. Got it. So. So your foot, your shoulder, mm. your elbow, your head. Okay. What we call the vision center, right? Some people are right eye dominant, some people are left eye dominant. Mm. That doesn't matter. You'll hear people talk about that sometimes. What matters yeah. is is what looks like center to you. Right? You stick the stick out like this, yeah. and you and it's straight out from your face. You're not looking at it from the left side. You're not looking at it from the right side. It's straight out. That might be pointed right at your right eye. For some people, yeah. it might be pointed right at your the bridge of your nose, right? Right. So that's your vision center. Wherever wherever you see the right. center, the mirror. So all of that, all in the line of your shot. Okay. Looks like you have that down pretty pretty good. Okay. You know, there's a couple of things that I want to want to talk about, but first I'm just telling you all the ideals. Right. Right. Okay. So the next part of this, the next part of your fundamentals, is going to be the aim. Right. So and believe it or not, this is actually the first part. Your stance is is important, but before you get into your stance, you have to know where the line of the aim is. Okay. Right. So you almost want to visualize that line, almost like there's a groove, right? There's like this little tiny groove that you want to plop your stick down into. Right behind the ball. Right behind the ball, right. And the best way to do that is from back here. Okay. To approach, like right. Approach, look at it, stay on that line, and just drop the stick right down that line. It's a little bit easier than if I'm here, yeah. Trying to line it up, right? Got it. Even if I'm adjusting them. Now, you can imagine if there was a groove there that this would just drop and lock into. Mm -hmm. If I'm off to the side, it's kind of hard to figure out how to get it in there. Right. But if I come straight down on it, boom, I'm in the groove already. Yeah. Right? It's just a visualization. Okay. So that's the line, the stance. Mm -hmm. um, another important fundamental is going to be your bridge. Yeah. Looks like you have that down pretty well too. There are different bridges and we can right. certainly work on that. Um, what were you going to say? So, like, I don't know what you call this bridge. Or it's an open bridge. bridge. Yeah, so I use that most mm -hmm. of the time, but then when I'm like, if the cue ball is like right against, can I use this? Mm -hmm. It's like right against the rail. Mm -hmm. Is it better to just keep it open and then go further out? That's what I do. And I see some people do this. That's fine too. So, so is it just a preference thing, or is there like well, an advantage? it's whatever works for you to make the shot, honestly. Okay. Like, a shot like this is really, is actually difficult, right? You want the bridge, you, your, your bridge yeah. should be, ideally, when you're doing a bridge away from the ball. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different, but ideally, about 8 to 10 inches away. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, so, obviously... If this is right on the rail, the best way to do that is to put your fingertips right on the edge here. Yeah. And then you want to keep your cue as level as possible. Some people think because it's up on the on the edge, you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. come down on it. Right. The problem is I could be dead straight, yeah. and if I'm a little bit to the left or right, yeah. Uh, you know, you don't if you're up, you're gonna mass save the ball, you're gonna curve it. Okay. You don't want to do that. So I want to adjust my height. If it's against the rail or something like that, works. If it's against the rail, you can notice that um, my 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 cue is almost parallel, right? It's yeah. not. I'm not and you, 
You have to focus a little bit more so you don't miss you like I just did. Yeah. But it is, it's usually more of a function of just the chalk. So if it's on the rail, yeah, a bridge back here Got it. is really what you want. And then, you know, just a comfortable angle. It doesn't have to be exactly flat. Mm -hmm. You know, you can come up a little bit, but you need to make sure that you're hitting right in the center of the ball. But the important thing that we're focusing on right now is the bridge. Okay. So, yeah, that's an open bridge. Yep. A closed bridge um, you'll use usually if you're going to shoot a little bit harder and especially if you're going to use off-center shot. You're not hitting the center of the ball. So if you're doing follow, if you're doing draw, if you're doing left or right English, yeah. you want to use a closed bridge to prevent, to help prevent a miscue. How do you do a closed bridge? I've never... Okay. So, yeah, I can show you that. So, here, you can try this along with me. So, um, there's, a, there's a number of different ways you can do it, but basically what you want to do is close your finger over, the, over this, okay? And then you kind of want your fingers, you don't want to be flat, okay? You don't want to be flat. You want to be tilted. So you notice my, yeah. my palm is about 45 degrees. Got it. See that? Yeah. And what you really want in all bridges, you want a tripod, all right? As long as you have a tripod, then it's nice and straight, okay? With this bridge, yeah. one, two, three. Mm -hmm. That's my tripod because my, my palm is... Is on. And you can see that I spread these two fingers out as much as I can. Which right. one, your middle finger? Yeah, in this case, it's my middle finger. And my middle finger goes up underneath the key like that, yeah. just because it's really comfortable for me. Yeah. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can wrap your finger around like that. You'll see some people do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can do tip to tip. Now, the problem with that is it's loose, right? Yeah. So what I do is I kind of pinch like this until I don't have any of that side to side. So pinch your fingers together and then just kind of pull them up this way. Yeah. Right. And then maintain the tripod. Exactly. The tripod, yeah, this is perfect. Your fingers are wide here, and then of course you got your palm. So you got that tripod. Up. And it can get, you, uh, it, the, the toughest part of it to get used to is the closed part of it. Yeah. And you'll just have to come up with something that's that's comfortable for you. Um, you can do this by doing a lot of extreme English shots, right? Mm -hmm. And just try to do try to use some sort of a bridge. You can use something like this that's closed. Mm -hmm. You know, some people actually will tuck this finger, get a little bit more comfortable for them. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it, but you basically want you want it to be close so that you can have no lateral motion in the stick. You're trying to move it side to side. Yeah, I still just, feel the friction between these two fingers mm -hmm. on the stick, so I think it's yeah. something that would um, A glove would really help with that. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, the, the Q-Tech. If you want, here, try this one. Oh, you're, uh, you're left-handed, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a problem. Because that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a left-handed glove for a right-handed player. For a right-handed player. Yeah, it's, it's fine. But, yeah, um, I would strongly recommend a glove. They're not that expensive. So this is fine. Sure. Uh, well, no, you don't. What you want to do is you want to, if you're going to just point to it, you either want to do that, a little pinch, sure. it prevents it from moving side to side. So this is what you want to do. The other way to do it is just let go and then just kind of curl your finger underneath and do it like that. Uh, that's another way to do it. But you get that stickiness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The glove will, will definitely prevent that. And you said that closed style is better if you want more power and more extreme spin. But you can do. Almost everything. If you're just careful, you can do almost everything with an open bridge. So for now, we'll just we'll just worry about keep it open bridge. Right? Okay. So that's that's but something to be aware of. And then of course you've got you've got your fringe type of shot. So you have you you kind of if the ball's close to the rail, obviously you can't really do anything here. Yeah. You're too close, and maybe this is too far away. So you want to do a rail bridge, and that's what you were talking about. So yeah. with a rail bridge, the way I do them and the way I recommend, yeah. 
you'll see some people do this. The problem with this is that you've got you've only got two points securing. Okay. Right. And it's it's possible to do a shot like this, but it's what's better to me yeah. is to take this thumb mm -hmm. and put it on the inside. Oh. Just like that. So now you've got a more stable right. So you don't even need this finger. Yeah, it's just a right. common move. But this finger I have right up against the, the shaft, and it just it just feels like very secure, right? and I can get very precise. So that's a rail bridge. So put your thumb on the inside. It's just like the pinky, just just like you have. Oh, I know the inside, just like that. It's just tucked up right right up next to the shaft. Okay. Your thumb flat up against the shaft. Oh, just like that. there you go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. Doesn't it so, feel like it's now? It's like, like it's locked like in. A million times better. Right. Perfect. Yep. And does it matter where I hold? I use a ninety degrees, but does it matter if I'm like here? It here? doesn't. It doesn't matter. Only as long as your as long as your back arm is at the point of contact of the cue. Yeah. Point of contact. Mm -hmm. Your back arm should be comfortable. Because what you're doing is you're swinging the pendulum, right? Yeah. Back, forward, back, forward. So this is this is to the, the, the far end of it, right? Because uh -huh. my arm all the way forward. Right. This back end of it. So my arm, my hand, my my forearm is a pendulum. Okay. Right. And at the moment of contact is when it's straight up and down, right in the middle of the pendulum. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> what ends up happening is depending on how big our wingspans are. Mm -hmm. Every single shot you shoot. If I'm shooting a shot here, and I want to shoot a soft shot, so I have a closer bridge. Yeah. You'll notice in the back arm. See where it is on the stick? Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah. If I want a bridge here, well, look what that spot does. Do you have to compensate? So you. I compensate by bringing this back. Right, but. Mm -hmm. The distance from here to here should be is the fixed. same every time. Right. If that's fixed, then you just adjust the length. Right. Because your arm is a fixed length. Your body yeah, yeah. is a fixed size. Yeah. It's always going to be the same length. Yeah. But if you get closer, you're going to be choked up on the stick. Um, if you get farther away, then you're going to be farther back on the stick. Yeah. Right. So you have about this much leeway to work with. You really don't want to be much uh, in front of the wrap. Mm -hmm. Here, do this. Hold your hands like this. Just let it rest. Okay. And slowly, slowly clap your hands and just let the let the stick balance. That right there. That's the center Oops. of gravity. That's the center of gravity. So you want your hand to be your your back hand should be always be behind the center of gravity. You have a pretty long wingspan. Yeah. You'll never have to worry. Um, I have a student, Robin. Mm -hmm. She's about that tall. Literally, she's okay. very, very short. Yeah. She's a very small wingspan. And when she does, when I was showing her how to do a close-up soft shot, her hand was like way up here, and she lets go. <laughs> so she, she can't do an open bridge yeah. because the stick wants to come up. Oh. Because okay. she's in front of the center yeah. of gravity. If you're behind it, you know, you never have it. And that's not an issue with you, so we won't even worry about it. Yes, your hand will change position on the stick, but that'll be based solely on how far the bridge is. You just you, you get to a point where you're just comfortable, a comfortable spot. Okay. And that's a good transition to the grip. Okay. So your grip on the back end, first of all, should be perpendicular at the point of contact of the cue. Okay. It should also be perpendicular in this direction. Straight down to the point. Right? Your wrist should be in line. So if you point your fingers to the floor, mm -hmm. they should be pointing straight down to the floor like that. That's the position your wrist should be. Uh, okay. Not like this. Okay. Not like this. Mm -hmm. Just a nice, comfortable pointing straight down to the floor. That's that is the position your wrist should be. Okay. The second thing is your grip should be a single point of contact. Okay. You don't want to be ham fisted. Okay. Good. Right. Said, okay. Because I thought that's how you're supposed to do so. But it's not. No, it isn't. Um, and the reason for that is 
difference when it comes to um, when it comes to our skeletal structure okay. and muscular structure we are not we're constantly our bodies are constantly um, making adjustments right yeah. very subconscious you don't even know you're doing it. even if you're just standing you know at attention yeah. right you're still your body's making tiny little adjustments we're constantly moving yeah. right the bird on the other hand locks itself can lock itself in position and not move a single you know micrometer right okay. so <clears throat> because of that the, the fewer joints and the fewer muscles we use mm -hmm. the better Got it. right we want we want to try and mimic that that rigid structure rather than using our muscles and because the muscles are going to put minute little changes and stuff mm -hmm. so the problem with fist gripping this yeah. is that when you move when the stick moves through its motion of stroke right yeah. you're see what's happening to my wrist my wrist is changing. changing right and if I'm bending my wrist especially since your our wrists move this way really well but they don't really move this way naturally very right. well right so we're built to do this that's fine but we're not built to do this Got it. as well so to mitigate that and to prevent that we just simply use single point of contact and now the stick can move and I'm not moving my wrist uh -huh. right I can lock my wrist in place right yep. you could you could take a painter's stick and strap yourself to it and you can still do this ah, right yeah. so that's that's important straight up and down single point of contact mm -hmm. and try a couple shots with that sure. you can just shoot these into the pocket or something yeah just gonna watch your stroke okay just oh from here you can shoot them into the pocket now remember what i said about we will every single time we get down to shoot a ball we need to take everything that i'm telling you and put it all together okay okay so even though you're just knocking balls into the pocket you should still get in the line step into it right here bridge grip okay it's not bad um I think that you could probably choke up just a little bit because your your back hand is a little bit back. And what you're doing is you're actually turning your wrist this way. So when you shoot, you turn your wrist like that. But I'd like you to try. So go ahead and get down, and I'll and I'll adjust you. Okay. Okay. So let's move this forward just a little bit. All right. And then remember, point these three fingers to the floor. Don't curl, just yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then wrap these around. You don't want an air gap there. There you go. Good. Yeah. That's what you want right there. The pointing to the fingers to the floor, that's not something you need to do on every shot. That does it, it, it helps remind you to keep things straight. Got it. If you're having trouble with that, go do the finger that. thing, pointing straight to the floor. That'll help you kind of lock everything in a straight position. Okay. So basically like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's shoot these last two in without hitting the ring. Let me, uh, one thing that you need to understand when you're looking at a table, it's very difficult for people to do this, so hopefully you yeah. won't have too much trouble. This is not the pocket, okay? This is not the pocket. Okay. The big black holes that you can see on the table are not the pocket. Those are not the pocket. Uh, okay. The pocket is the gap between these two points. The uh, ball goes through that gap, it falls in the yeah. hole. Right? Yeah. Yes, this is the pocket. But my, what I'm trying to tell you is this is really the pocket you're looking for. Okay. Okay. So when you're aiming at the shot, you're not aiming here. Yeah. You're aiming 
with the center of this right there. Okay. Okay. Same thing, especially on the side pockets. If you're over here and you're aiming at the pocket and you're focused on this, you're going to hit the rail every time. Right. Okay. But if you're focused on right in between the two, right in the middle, then it doesn't matter where you are, you can still make it in that pocket. Nice. Very nice. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to go too much on the, on the fundamentals. You've got them down pretty good. Okay. Uh, I pointed out a couple of spots where you know, the wrist and the the wrist and your approach. Okay. Right? The approach is important. The approach isn't something we talk about in fundamentals. The fundamentals is is really more the mechanics. Mm -hmm. It's and also you want to develop a, a pre shot routine. Right. Okay. You want to if you want to be consistent at the table, you should approach every single shot exactly the same way. Okay, like the same time each same time same pattern. Same yes. Sometimes you're going to think a little bit harder about what you want to do, mm -hmm. but once you have decided on the shot, right? So I'm looking at the table. I've got all kinds of options. You know, I've decided. Okay, I'm probably going to shoot one of those two. Right? I can either shoot the seven, come around two rails, shoot the one next, or I can shoot the one, go down here, shoot the seven next. All of that I'm doing just looking at the table. Okay. Chalk in hand, I'm looking at the table. Right. This is part of my routine. Once I do this, the whole world around me just fades away. Because I'm I'm in I'm in the zone. If I'm in the zone, that means I'm so locked into my routine that nothing else bothers me. Right. You know, I'm looking at the, the shots. I'm trying to gauge which one. And it also matters, you know, well, what are the balls are in the way? Yeah. Um, there's just all kinds of factors, you know, where I'm trying to figure out the pattern of what, what I'm going to try and do. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to move the cue ball more than I have to, but sometimes I have to. Mm -hmm. It's better um, to... Short shots with very little cue ball movement okay. it makes it look like. Usually, if you shoot a game like that, you figure out the best path for the minimal cue ball movement. Even though you analyzed and you figured it all out, and you're like putting the puzzle together, people watching are like, "Yeah, I could have run that because you know, look how easy that was." Exactly. And you made it easy because yeah. you, you analyzed. But once you have figured out the shot you're gonna do, I'm shooting that one ball. Okay, now I'm focused on the one. I know where I want to shoot it, and I know I want the cue ball to end up here, right? Yeah. Once you get to a certain point, you're not even going to think about the speed that you're going to use or the English that you're going to use. You just know your cue ball needs to go here. It's like you telling yourself, I need to drive to the store, right? When you were 16 years old, it was, I got to get in my car. I gotta turn on the ignition. I gotta check my mirrors. I okay. gotta hand the tenant, right? Yeah. Now, what do you do? Oh, you know, I gotta get to, to Michael's house, and yeah. you know, this is where the directions are. And I'm just gonna go. Yeah. The end result is what you're looking for. So once you played a while and you and you really start to work on all these things that we're that we're talking about, yeah. you'll just go. I wanna shoot this in the side, and I'll keep all right. And your subcon. The whole goal is for your subconscious to take over almost every aspect of the game. So you're not actively thinking about it. You're not actively thinking about anything, except yeah. the more complicated stuff, which is the patterns. I'm playing nine balls, so I have a specific pattern. I'm playing eight balls, so the yeah. pattern play is a little different, right? So you're thinking about that kind of stuff. You're not really thinking about, you know, you, you know if you want the cue ball here after shooting the one, then you have to start thinking, well, geez, you know, how am I going to navigate and get around all the balls and right. all of that to get there? You know, it's like the two balls, your next ball, but this ball is pocket, this ball is blocked, or this pocket is blocked, and you have to get underneath the two to really have a shot. Mm -hmm. Now you got to start thinking about the complicated stuff, right? right? But for the most part, it should most of it should be automatic. Okay. So back to our routine. The routine is I, I know where I'm going to shoot. Mm -hmm. Now is the point where I'm looking to chalk. You want to chalk every single shot. Okay. However, chalking means going 
but in good light, looking at the tip, and if it needs it, if there's any dark spots, if it's not perfectly even, basically all you're doing is coloring. You're not grinding chalk on there, and you are always looking at it, right? You're just trying to make it look perfectly uniform. And it doesn't require a lot of pressure or anything like that. It's like you're just coloring in a, a coloring book, right? Getting all spots cut. So chalking might be looking at that and, okay, it looks fine. I don't need to chalk anymore. I'm on the line of my shot. Mm -hmm. I see the aim. I want a half ball shot on the one. I can just see that. Yeah. So what's really cool is if I could, if I have a solid aim point, which in this case is going to be the edge of the long ball. Right. Now I don't have to worry about a ghost ball or contact points. Yeah. I just know. Right. So I put my chalk down. I get behind the shot. I mentally prepare myself, whatever that takes. I get behind the shot. I lower myself into it. I line myself up, and then I ask myself, is that ball going in? And what I want is a, an emphatic yes. Green light, right? Yeah. No yellow light, no red light. Green light. Okay. If I have a yellow light, I'll get up, and readjust myself. Because, yeah. and you'll you'll start to hear that more and more as you hit more balls, as you play more games. Just your subconscious has cataloged everything. It's yeah. cataloged your misses. It's cataloged your, your runouts. Yeah. Everything, right? right. So you get down on the shot, and you'll notice I naturally went to a rail. Yeah. I don't even think about the bridge anymore. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. It's just, if I have to come on, if, if I'm shooting here, yeah. I'm, I'm on a rail. If I have to come back here, I'm, I'm like this on the rail. Mm -hmm. If I have to shoot here, if I have to shoot here, my hand just naturally just comes up on the rail. Right? Yeah. Like this, like this, sometimes just my pinky. Mm -hmm. It just, it's natural. Right, you won't even think about it. So, again, down on the line of the shot, I got the green light. I I, I feel it. Mm -hmm. I know I want a tiny bit of right hand English, only because, only in this case, I just feel it. Right, yeah. but I know, you know, it's going to be a little bit of hold up English, basically, when it hits the other rail. I stop. I wind up. I take my practice strokes. And then. And then wind up for my next one. So that's the last part we're going to talk about fundamentals is once you're down on the shot, you've given yourself the green light, your aim, you're, you feel like your aim is right. Mm -hmm. And that should be still not doing this. Yeah. Okay. Because if you're doing this, you know, you don't have anything that your brain doesn't have anything to really latch on to. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like aiming a gun. Right. Yeah. You're, you're perfectly still. You take that breath, and then when it's time, you squeeze, right? Yeah. So with pool, you don't really, you can't just squeeze because, you know, there you've got gunpowder to do all the work. In yeah. this case, your arm has to do the work. So when you're getting down on the shot, you're down on the shot, you've got the green light, you're ready to go. Then you take a couple practice strokes, and then you follow through on the shot. Sometimes you have to do a really hard shot. Yeah. Just a lot of speed for whatever reason. So what I do on those is I kind of picture that my hand, and I have a spring loaded in my arm, right? Mm -hmm. So, because most of the time I'm going to tell you, your shots will be like this. Ready to go. Right. One, two, three, and just follow through on that same cadence, right? Yeah. One, two, three, and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Same speed. I'm just stopping it. One, two, three, go, and then follow through. Yeah. Or one, two, three. Whatever you, whatever you're comfortable with is just do whatever makes sense to you. You should try to do the same thing every time. Okay. However, sometimes I need that ball to really move after it hits the ball, so I need to hit it a little harder. Right? Yeah. So the speed, so when would you want to hit a fast shot, like you just said? Like this here. A long I shot? Want the, I want the cute, let's say my next shot's right here. Yeah. And i got to get the ball to come around the table. So, Especially on a nine-foot table. Yeah. And if it's slow cloth, even more so. Right. Yeah. So now I'm going to have to hit this hard enough so that I can come off these two rails and come over here and get a shot over here. Okay. Right. So I know that I'm going to have to use a little more speed. So in this case, instead of just a simple let the cue 
swing. Yeah. I still want to use that, but now I'm kind of thinking I've got a spring and it's like it's like a pinball machine mm -hmm. pulling back, right? But I'm doing one, two, three, and then letting go, and it, that kind of mm, it has a little more force to it. It's not just falling through the ball. I'm actually kind of you know, giving it some impetus, right? Okay, my aim is good. One, two, three. So you can see that I actually kind of gave it a little bit, right? Yeah. But I had that already in my mind. It just And it, it's more subconscious than anything. I know how much speed I need in order to get it to go where I want it to go. So you just kind of, so you're going to do one of two things. You're going to have that spring loaded shot. Mm -hmm. and you're just kind of you kind of think of it in terms of you're loading the spring and then coming in, loading the spring and then driving through. But same routine each time. Let's try a couple shots. Okay. So grab the chalk. So you're thinking about your shot. In this case, we know exactly what we're doing. We're shooting the. Yeah. Don't worry about your leave on the on the cue ball right now. Okay. You should have maybe a little tiny bit of draw, right? Yeah. So that's your shot. Get on the line. There you go. Get back. Get in the line of the shot. Feel the line. Step into it. Remember to ask yourself if you've got that green light. Uh, it needs to be part of your routine, and you need to you need to do that every time. It doesn't matter how easy or hard the shot is. Okay. Every shot's the same. You should just ask yourself about that green light each time. Okay. First, figure out the line. Mm -hmm. okay. Figure out the line of your aim. Yeah. Now, in most cases like this, you don't really have to worry too much about the line of the shot versus the line of the aim. Yeah. yeah. And let's say you're doing this. Uh, All right. So what you want to do here is yeah. you want to look at the line, line of the shot, figure out your contact point, and whatever method you use to, to figure out what aim you need, yeah. then you get on the aim line, and then get down to, to shoot the shot. Okay. Still, though, you're, you're asking red light, green light, right? Yeah. Or mother may I. <laughs> I think what's happening here that when when you were practicing before, yeah. you were making a lot of balls yeah. doing really well. Don't be discouraged by this. Even with misses, again, like I told you, your subconscious catalogs those things. Okay. So what's happening here though is you're learning how to drive the car all over again. Yeah. And you have a lot to think about. Try not to think about those things too much. Okay. okay? But let the back of your mind kind of do a um, an inventory. Does it feel like I'm doing everything right? And if not, step back up and think about those things, and okay. then focus on it again. And just feel how it feels when you get into when you get down and you're like you're locked in on the shot. Mm -hmm. Everything feels good. You're at a good bridge. Your grip feels and just everything just feels right. Well, just like when you did this and locked it in, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the feeling you're looking. Okay. All right. For everything. Okay. But don't overthink it. Just. Nice. Good. Do it again. So generally what I do is I just try to you know, envision the, the line mm -hmm. and just try to hit on that line. Okay. Yeah, whatever aim, aim works for you. If you're having trouble with your aim, we'll talk about some different aiming techniques. Right. 
But I mean, I watched you shoot. It looks like your aim, your aiming techniques seem to be pretty good. So, if you ever want to discuss that, we can. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to focus on that too much. One other thing that we didn't really talk about on the stroke, try to make sure that when, you, when you're stroking, when you actually make a shot, follow through and then stop. Don't move. Okay. okay. Try and just shoot it and watch the ball into the pocket and then stand up. Okay. okay. And the other thing, when you're coming down on the shot, when you're coming down on your line, try to think of it in terms of bringing the cue down. What I'm noticing is that you're looking at the line of the shot, which is okay, yeah. but you're just kind of going straight into it. Okay. Right? I want you to kind of ease into it and bring the cue down onto the shot. Uh -huh. See how that feels for you. Okay. Sure. I'm a little better than I mm -hmm. brought it down to the line. Because I felt like one. I was just trying to come in and walk. Felt a bit rushed. Mm -hmm. So to bring it down after yeah. I hit the line felt better. Okay, it just gives you a second to breathe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And breathe. You'll hear me say that to you occasionally. Yeah. Sometimes that just means take a deep breath. And it kind of helps settle everything. Right. It's not about being nervous about the shot or anything like that. It's just breathing is is a is a is a core need in our bodies right yep. just like drinking water taking a breath does a lot for us right it helps settle us it helps just kind of it just helps you feel better and if we hold our breath we're nervous about something that's when things are <laughs> yeah right you get up in front of a bunch of people to speak and you're nervous about it and you're not breathing properly you start to get out of breath and it's like no matter what you say you're just kind of it's tight yeah. you know you just take a deep breath, just loosens everything up. Take it down. Good. Good. So how do you feel? I feel better with the coming down. Mm -hmm. Gives me a good way to like reevaluate yeah. if my stance is correct. Okay. Cool. Feel pretty good about all the, the fundamentals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, look, the only you thing, look solid. So. Yeah, the only thing I'm kind of working on just a little bit is I'm noticing that wrist after you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like correcting it a little bit too. Yeah. That'll take some time because yeah. you just, you're used to, you get you get to a point where... It's like muscle memory. Yeah. Exactly. It's like muscle memory. And that's what, when I talk about the subconscious, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about muscle memory. Yeah. So sometimes we have to reset those things. Yeah. Um, a lot of times... Um, I'll get you know a more advanced player that comes in mm -hmm. and I'll watch their fundamentals and their fundamentals are a little bit off, but they really don't have problems you know yeah. with stroke or or anything like that. Their mm -hmm. their aim is true, their stroke is really true. So in those cases, I don't bother telling them. I don't bother going over those things because yeah. the problem is is that every time you break something down, mm -hmm. you're going to take their skill level down a little bit. Yeah. Now hopefully. That to build them back up even oh, higher, yeah. right? It's like boot camp. That's what boot camp does. Strips you down and then builds you back up into something yeah. better or bigger or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but um, for the most part, I, I don't really see a need for that. Okay. So, um, but yeah, in your case, um, just because because of the way that you were doing it, mm -hmm. um, you hold farther back. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. So if you can bring it forward and then straighten up that wrist, I think I think that will really benefit you. Okay. Is there anything, uh, anything specific that you want to work yeah. on? Something that you need to figure out? Yeah, just more of uh, controlling the cue ball, the spins. Okay. Uh, I think I have a general idea. So if you want to correct me on some things or if, you know something like that, because I feel like even on the rack we we're playing earlier, mm -hmm. I. 
you know, I was like, okay, this is kind of how I have to hit it to make it in. But I, it's so hazy for me to how do I get from there to here. Right. So what what happens to the cue ball after the next shot? Okay. So let's try this. I want you to come over here. Okay. I want you to shoot this shot. And I just want you to tell me with center, center ball, maybe a little bit of ball. Okay. Make this in the center of the, of the pocket. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me where the cue ball is going to be. Okay, with just center. Just center, a little bit high. Okay. Um, I'm just going to follow its tangent this way and then up this way. Okay. That's, that's a good start. Um, yes, when the cue ball comes off, the object ball, yeah. it definitely goes on a 90 degree tangent. Yeah. Right. However, with natural forward roll of the cue ball, which almost always has going to sharpen it a little bit, it's going to bend it forward. Okay. Right. So 90 degrees is this way, and then forward could be a little bit. The forward different. roll tends to push it that way. Got it. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> and if we want pure tangent, it would have to be. Uh, center or a little bit below center? Exactly. Okay. Um, don't think of it, never think of it in terms of where you hit this to make it do something off this ball. Okay. What you're trying to do, yeah. so you want it to go on the tangent, or in this case, you want it to be a pure stop shot. Yeah. No, no coming back or forward. What you need is the cue ball to not be rolling forward at all. It needs to be sliding into the fog. Okay. Right? It, at the point of contact, this ball is not rotating yeah. at all. Yeah. So what that'll do is its impetus forward mm -hmm. no longer, right? It can't go in that direction anymore yeah. because the, the five ball took all of that energy. Mm -hmm. So all of the cue ball can do is go in this way. Yeah. And if it doesn't have any forward roll, nothing is going to make it bend forward. Yeah. So all it's going to do is come off like this. Got it. So if you're close, and you shoot it hard, center ball. Okay. If you're farther away, then yeah, you hit it a little bit low, so that by the time it gets to the five, it stops spinning. All right. So, and you can see that demonstrated here. If you watch the 12 ball, watch the strike. You see it spin backwards a little bit, and then it goes forward. Yep. The ball, the, because of the friction of the table, naturally wants to have a natural forward roll. Okay. So most of the time, your shots are going to be focused with, um, are, are going to be judged by natural forward roll. Okay. And if you're and if you're thinking that the ball won't have natural forward roll because you might have to hit it a little harder, yeah. then hit it about a half tick above center. Uh -huh. Okay. And then it will. I mean, you can't overspin the cue ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when you hit it and it hasn't hit any other ball, it's just immediately going to have natural forward roll. Right. It doesn't overspin and then start to go. Got it. But if you hit it high and hard and it hits a ball, now it stops and it has a lot of spin, and that's what makes it take off. Okay. All right, so let's see where it goes. Just shoot that into the side pocket and watch where the cue ball goes. Just forward roll, no spin. Okay. Forward roll, so basically center. A little bit, a little bit above center. <laughs> Focus on making the ball, yeah. and and what you say before it's like I'm not focused on where I'm hitting here. I'm focused on making it. Or yeah, focus on making the ball. Don't worry about don't worry about the spin of the cue ball. Okay. And and shoot with a little more speed. Okay, just a nice firm follow. Okay. Oh, sorry. You're thinking too much about the path of the cue ball. Just make the ball. Okay? So, line of the aim. Here, get the line of the aim. Figure out exactly the line of the aim, which is the center of this pocket. Okay? Figure out your contact, your aim. Bend it down on the shot. Get it a little bit high and then follow through. Okay. Same exact shot.
You notice the exact same thing. Yeah. So what about here? Down here. So the key, the first key to um, because it's controlling the cue ball, is first understanding where the cue ball wants to go. Right. So it naturally wants to go a little bit further than uh, tangent. Exactly. It, it naturally, just the natural path of the ball, for example, shooting this ball here, there are certain um, rules of thumb that I know. And this isn't something that you necessarily need to remember right now, but one of the ones, one of the rules I know is the rule of threes. So this is where I have to contact. This is where the, the ghost ball is, right? Yeah. So this is where I have to shoot it. And if I follow that to the rail, that goes to right there. Mm -hmm. Now compare it to the center of the pocket. See that distance there? Yeah. That's that's one distance. Okay. So now I go one, two, three. That's three distances, mm -hmm. right? That's my rule of three. If I shoot that two ball in the center of the pocket, mm -hmm. and I'm looking to get position on that eight ball, yeah. if I know that the cue ball is going to come down here, yeah. it's going to come towards this spot right here, because that's three times. So this is the this is the zero point right here, right? Zero point. This is the zero point is the line of the aim. Yeah. For the two ball in the side in the side pocket. Okay. The line of the path of the ball to that is my one is my unit of measure. That's one unit. Right. So now I count three the other direction. One, two, three. So it should it should come right about to that half diamond. Okay. And you're just doing center a little bit off the top? I'm just is just, just gonna let it naturally fold and roll. Okay. So I'm not shooting it hard so I don't have to shoot it I don't have to shoot it too high, but I just do I naturally tend to shoot almost all my shots about a half tip above center. Mm -hmm. It's more consistent that way. It was aimed right towards that. Right. So if I have a little bit more of an angle, yeah. so now my unit of measure from that to this, from this point to the middle of the pocket. So that's one unit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. Between those two. Yeah. So it should it should be right on that line. Back. Right, back there. It should hit that eight ball. If I measured it out right. I didn't do very precise, so it could be off just a hair, but. So, not that you have to memorize this, this part, this is a little bit more advanced, but the point being that understanding where the cue ball wants to go is very important. Now, if I understand that, there's a lot of things I can do with that knowledge. Number one, if I have a ball here, I can give myself position. Yeah. Number two, if I know it's going to come, so in this case, it's going to come one here, so it's like, one, two, three. it's going to be close to this diamond here. Yeah. I'm not going to scratch. Yeah. So if I'm getting, you know, if I'm having, a, if I'm needing a cue ball to actually move a little bit, yeah. I'm not worried about scratching. That's one thing I can do. Other thing I can do with it is I can say, well, I know that's the way it naturally wants to go, mm -hmm. but I don't actually want it to go that. So I've got to kind of put some, I've got to put something on the cue balls, do something with the cue ball to make it ch change what it naturally wants to do. In this case, I'm going to put a little bit of draw on it. So a sliding cue ball, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to work, I'm going to take advantage of the natural tendency of a sliding cue ball, okay. which wants to go on the tangent, right? It wants to come down this way. Right. So if I shoot essentially a stop shot, or in this case we call this stun like shot. Like a tip, tip below center? Yeah, it's just, it depends on the speed of my shot, Oh, right? So if I hit it super low, super low, it's going to drop out. It would, unless I hit it softer. Oh. Right on the tangent. Exactly. And because I hit it softer, it's more draw so that it would, 
All I needed to do was stop spinning mm-hmm. at the moment it hit the field. So if you were to hit that shot harder, you mm-hmm. wouldn't need to be so below the center. Exactly. And for some reason, you know, this is my shot. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of shallow. Right? Yeah. And I need to get to the other end of the table. Yeah. Then I'm going to hit it more center ball. Because you don't need that much draw because you're hitting it harder. You're hitting it harder. So you'll notice if I hit center ball hard, yeah. watch how much it slides. It kind of slid for a second and then it started rolling. Yeah. But and so it stopped it stopped its forward or stopped its slide here and started forward rolling right around there. If I hit it really low and hit it softer, see that? Mm-hmm. Now the ball didn't go as far, but I still got the same distance before, before it, it got to its stopping point. Right. So with a and we'll touch on that. Yeah, we have some time. We'll touch on, we'll, we'll look at follow and draw shots, and I have a booklet that's going to actually give you some practice and stuff. Okay, we'll start for that. So I'd like to have you leave here with that knowledge. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, that, so that you can work on this sort of thing. Understanding that with a stop shot or a draw shot, the amount of draw that you get, the amount of backspin you get, depends, number one, on how hard you hit it, mm-hmm. and number two, how low you hit it. Combination of those two for the terms, the amount of draw. With follow, that's not that's not as true because, like I said, you can't overspin. Mm-hmm. So with follow, it's more you want natural forward roll, but at the point that it, at the moment it hits the ball, how sharp that forward angle is is dependent on the spin, like how tall we hit it. No, okay. no. So here's the interesting thing. I was showing you this, right? Yeah. Let's put this ball at the three at the three spot. Right. Okay. Put my A line mm-hmm. is right there. So there's my unit. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually going to go towards that. So this is the line that the, that the cue ball would take. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if I hit this with natural forward roll, it should hit that ball. Okay. All right. Regardless of how much how much top you put. Regardless of how much top I hit. However, if I hit it harder, it negates that ball. It doesn't negate it. This is the inch, this is the really interesting thing. If you're into physics, this will really draw, bad. it would negate the spin with more power, right? Right. Let's don't think about draw. Draw and follow are completely two different animals. Okay. 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 So with follow, because the table grabs onto the ball with friction yeah. and makes it roll. Yeah. Okay. When you put draw on, you're you're defying the table. But with with forward roll, you're going with the grain of the table. So if they're they're because of that, they're completely different. However, I showed you that with this shot, so let's provide this sorry here, right there. So yeah. so with this shot, my my angle the angle off of this goes into that. Right. Yeah. Now think about this. When you shoot the ball hard, it's going to travel on that tra- tangent line, right? Yeah. If you shoot it softly, it'll still travel on the tangent line. But with the, the forward push, spin with a little bit of forward, grabs it and it'll push it a little bit forward. And it, and it pushes it onto this angle. So the line, if you hit it soft, is going to be like a little bit. No, 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 no. If if I if I shoot it soft, yeah, that's the line that's going to take. Oh, okay. As I hit it harder. It widens out. It doesn't change the angle of the line. Okay. The I'm doing a parallel shift over. Okay. The line stays at the same angle. But it comes out. So you notice that I when I hit it harder, it went on that line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It hit here and came out this way and then ended up on that line. It's always the same line. The same angle. Right? Yeah. But hitting it harder. Now I negated that 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 rule of three by pushing out further before it before it bent forward. Before it bent forward. But it'll always bend forward into the same angle. 
Okay. The physics of it, you know, um, Bob Jewett actually did a tremendous amount of research on this. Yeah. And the cool thing is, is he was my instructor. Oh, cool. For for to, to become an uh, to become an instructor, yeah. he was my mentor. So, uh, but I've I've read uh, like a lot of his books and stuff. Yeah. And, um, but Bob Jewett and the other one, um, uh, Robert Byrne, covered a lot of this too. But yeah, the physics of this is is amazing. You can see it. He had diagrams and stuff, so I can kind of draw something here to show you. So, if you're shooting this ball in this direction, mm -hmm. so this is the rail here, yep. and we'll work, don't worry about the diamonds, because you're really measuring the diamonds, which okay. are in, they're in from the rail, and you don't worry about them. This is your ghost ball. That's what you're aiming at in this direction. Okay. So, what happens is, when you shoot this at a certain angle here, there's a specific angle between this and this. Yeah. Let's call it 10 degrees. Okay. Angle that's going to come off is, let's say, like that. It's going to come off at this angle. It will always be at that angle. Always. If the, if the cue ball, if this cue ball is naturally rolling forward, yeah. It will always, and it's this particular angle, it will always end up on this angle. Right. But it won't necessarily end up on this vector. It might be on this vector. It might be on this vector. Right, and, and that depends on that how That depends. Hours. That depends. So what we're doing is we're hitting this ball, and this ball initially wants to go that way, but it's going to end up on one of these vectors. Right? How hard you hit it is like skidding into the turn. If you're going super fast, you're going to skid way out, but then you're going to end up going that direction, right? Got it. If you're coming slower, you're going to skid out a little bit and go. But it's the same line, it's the same direction, I mean, but yep. it's moved over, right? So what happens is on a soft shot, it does that. Yep. Harder shot, it does that. Right. On a super harder. hard shot, it does that. Uh, Always ends up on the same angle. But different vector. Right, but... But because of the because once we hit this, basically you got to think of the ball is now skidding out, right? It's like peeling rubber. Yeah. So it hits the ball and it's doing this. But if we hit it hard enough, it's doing this in this direction. And but they're still going in the same. But before it rolls. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably a little more advanced than we really needed to cover, but you seem to, you seem to get a grasp on it. Yeah, no, that was really helpful. And and it's very important to, in order to understand what the cue ball wants to do, yeah. and then how you can take advantage of that, or change it. Okay. If I want this cue ball to hit right here, yeah. you can see right now that I would have to overcome amazing forces in order for it to come here and come straight back to this one. Yeah. Right. I would have to put a lot of draw on it. A lot of draw. It's probably going to mean a lot of speed, so it yeah. wants to go that way. Yeah. But in order to get it to come oh, this way, so regardless of draw or like top, just power is going to just yeah. naturally make it drift. The, the ball naturally starts in a tangent. It always yeah. starts in a tangent. Okay, and how far? The spin on the ball determines if it comes back, goes straight, or goes forward. Got it. And the um, and the speed of the shot determines how far it goes on that tangent before it spins back or goes. Sense. So I want to use a lot of draw. I don't want to use a lot of. I don't want to use a lot of speed. Let's make this a little more realistic. I would never do that at that angle. But let's and I'm going to cheat the pocket. Cheat the pocket means instead of going to the center, I'm going to aim a little bit over here. See how that changes the angle of my shot. Yeah. If I'm doing this, see how much angle that is. If I want to minimize the amount of lateral movement, then I'm going to try and cheat the pocket. And you can see the angle is not that, not as much. Okay. So, but if I wanted it to come here, or even, let's say, go into the pocket, because that's just the direction I want it to go. Now, since the cue ball is going this way, I've got to stop it from going in that direction and maybe even reverse it. Yeah. How do you do that? The only way is to get the cue ball spinning in this direction. Right. Sure. That way. Right. 
It wants to go that way. Yeah. I need to make it spin this way. How do I do that when I'm hitting the ball? Well, the only way to do that is to put mass A on. Right? Now we're getting really into tricky territory. But basically, if I do something like this, it stops it. It stopped it from going. I mean, on almost any other shot, especially with that speed. But to try to make it come back to here, that's nearly impossible. No matter what I do here, it's just looking at, you might cut this way, right? Yeah, see, I missed the shot. Yeah. I, were, I was able to pull it back, but that makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So understand where the cue ball wants to be, number one. And then I would, I'm going to teach you a couple of things to make the cue ball change its direction. So follow does not make it change direction except for in a, in a vertical space. And all it does is it makes it move in this direction more. Right? So with follow, natural forward roll. So you notice I'm not hitting too hard here. Cue ball naturally just, its spin makes it more. Only variable. The speed of the cue ball with that. It's a little bit harder shot, hitting a little bit off center, so make sure that it has natural forward roll when it hits the object ball. It's going to make it go far. And then the angle that I'm shooting determines how far in this direction it wants to go. Or obviously, if I'm shooting in this angle, this direction it wants to go. So if I do the same shot I just did, but I have a little bit more of an angle, then the cue ball will still go forward about the same. But, on but it goes it goes farther to the right because you hit it harder. Well, not because I hit it harder, but because of the angle. So yeah, the cue ball is essentially going in this direction. Yeah. And if I shoot like this. It's going in this direction less in this direction more. If I shoot from here, it's going very little in this direction but more and not. really far fast in this direction. So that's just a natural kind of thing that I think you understand when you're shooting. And the, the more the angle is, the more the cue ball wants to travel in that direction. And then of course if I want if I want to maximize my forward spin, then we just use maximum controlled speed, right? We don't want to use brake speed. Sometimes we put a lot of feet on it to make the cue ball move forward. If follow, it's all it is. You're just making it more speed, making it move more forward. That concept still apply because you hit that. It really does. Hard. It does. So yes. you hit it really hard. So meaning it, it was just going to curve a little bit more. It will. Yeah, but I mean, I was such a shallow angle. Yeah. That instead of hitting here. Yeah. It hit here. Got it. Because the angle was an extreme. With more of an angle, it would normally hit here. And but going... hitting it really hard would hit way over here. Can it just. Try, can we try that? Yeah. What? So do first do the shot relatively softly, but with enough speed to get to the end rail. Okay. Just enough. Remember to hit high. Just follow through. Don't walk. And just so we have the same exact. That's going to be one ball away. And this. Actually, you know what? We'll make them, we'll make them both one ball away. Because there is a slight angle. It's very slight. Because we'll have the same shot every time. Okay? We'll just make this right in the center of this pocket, hit it high with enough power to make the cue ball come to the right.
It's all right. You notice where it was going there, Jim. Coming at that angle. Show us some stuff all over there. Okay, same exact shot. Only this time, you're going to use a little more power. Okay, same aim, same shot. Just a little more power and follow through. Okay. okay. As much power as you can do with with control. Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Does that make sense to you now? Okay. So what's really cool is you can do. There are some practice drills that you can do. Okay. And you can grab anything that works for you. You can uh, use a sheet of paper and you cut a sheet of paper into a smaller card or whatever you want. Okay. But what's really cool is you can just take these and put them wherever you put. Take your target. The piece of paper is not going to. It's not going to affect the path of the ball mm. or anything like that, which is nice. This is your target. Okay. So what we can do, what you can do for practice, is line up a shot. This ball in the center of the table. Right smack in the center. Right between those two spots and, they, and directly in between these two pockets. Okay. Take this ball, lined up at the center, yeah. and this ball right next to it. And you're trying to get the 14 one? Nope. I'll oh. shoot him the 10. Okay. This is the setup, so you can do the same exact setup every time. And so this is where I want the cue ball tip. No, not necessarily. I was saying that we're gonna we can use this. Oh. Uh, so what you can do to, for practice is you can say, okay, uh, I can put the target right here, and I want to make the cue ball come into this target, or I want to put it here and make the cue ball go into that target. For now, what I'd like you to do is get used to. This is what the, I want to show you what the shot's gonna look like, and then I want you to shoot. So this is uh, what we call a half ball shot, okay? You're going to shoot the cue ball right at the edge of the table. Okay. That's a half ball hit. Do you understand why that's a half ball hit? Uh, half of the cue ball is touching this. Oh. Your aim. So so if we look at um, we're aiming at this ball. And we want to aim it right at the center of the pocket. Yeah. Okay, so that's our aim. The cue ball is right there. Yeah. Pointing right at the cue ball. So if you fire this, this circle right here and mm -hmm. this circle right here, that represents the cue ball. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you're aiming right at the center of it. Yeah. You'll notice where that line goes. The line goes right at the edge of the 10. See that? Mm -hmm. That's your aim line. Right at the edge of the 10. Yeah. That's a half ball hit. So what that means is half of this ball mm -hmm. overlaps with half of that ball. Got it. Make sense? Yeah. The other half of this ball is out here. Not touching it. Not touching the tip. Okay. That's a half ball hit. If your aim was like this, that's what we call a three-quarter ball hit. See this line right here, this circle right there. Mm -hmm. That represents the that represents the. Um, let's see, what am I looking at here? Hold on. Oh, okay. So we're aimed like this. The the clear piece is the cue ball. Mm -hmm. This curve right here is the overlap part. See, that's the part that overlaps the ten ball. Yeah. And that's three quarters of the ball. Three, three quarters of an overlap. That's a three quarter ball hit. And the opposite of that over here is a quarter ball hit. If I was aiming this way, only one quarter of the ball is overlapped. But in this drill here, 
Now on the nine foot tables, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the way I, I showed you to set this up, in fact, let me show you a better way to set this up so you can do this on the nine foot. Okay. So you're gonna have this ball here, and you're gonna take those two balls, and you're gonna line them up like that until the cue ball has a half ball here, which means you're looking at it in this direction. Mm -hmm. You're looking at this line, and you can see that the center of this ball intersects with the half ball. And these are lined up in the pot. Line those up. You can just line them up like that. Mm -hmm. And then take this, find out where the half line is, and put it right there. See what I mean? Yeah. Okay. You can just do that. Or if you, if you kind of know you've done it for a while, you can just go. So it's a half ball here. Yeah. You're aiming at the edge of the ball here mm -hmm. with high and a little bit of running English in this case. Do you, do you, know, do you know what running English is? I was just saying pop. Running English. English is spot side spin. Oh, no, no, no. So if you are hitting the rail in that direction yeah. and the cue and your your cue is spinning this way. It's more of a spin. See how that yeah. it runs with the angle. Oh, uh, they call it running angle. So with the with in the direction that you're hitting. Exactly. Right. This is the opposite of that, mm -hmm. and is usually called hold up or reversal. Okay. When I say hit it with running English, if the ball was here and you were shooting it this way, cue ball coming this way, that'd be left hand angle. Yeah. This way is right hand. Make sense? Yeah. Naturally, the ball is going to want to go this side. Mm -hmm. And so if I put a little bit of running, it's going to sharpen that angle up. A little bit. It's not going to do a whole lot. If anything, it's just going to help the cue ball keep on its path. Okay. It will sharp, It will change the angle a little bit, but anything more than 45 degrees, mm -hmm. um, the cue ball is not going to shoot off straighter too yeah. much. Okay. It's going to, um, and what ends up happening is when it comes around, it actually corrects itself. Mm -hmm. So it will follow the same path. Oh. It's really interesting. We call this the 222 shot because okay. this should go basically at the second diamond, yeah. the second diamond, second diamond, and then pretty close to the middle of the table. Okay. If I do center or uh, top right. Top right. Yeah. Make sure you chalk up, especially if you're using any, any, any kind of spin. Anything. You're not hitting center ball. Make sure that your chalk is good. And remember what I said. Your aim is going to be right. Yeah. Half. Now make sure that when you're getting into the line of the aim, it's something I noticed when you're doing a little bit, is make sure that your eye line is right on the line of the aim. Right? Behind the people? Yeah. You have a tendency, you're left handed, you have a tendency to be like this. Mm -hmm. And then coming down the shot, trying to get into that line. I'll make sure you can see the line from back here. Yeah. Right. That's the line right there where it's coming into that ball. Mm -hmm. And then come down into that. Okay. Same shot. I want you to. I want you to follow through a little bit more, a little more speed. Nice. Now you're not hitting. You're not hitting um, high. What's good about this shot is it kind of it kind of illustrates your. Um, how far off you are, right? Yeah. So you notice that it went in here and went to this diamond. Yeah. And then came to this diamond. Right. So what we want looks more like this. Right. Looks like you might not. 
a little bit less of an angle here. So this is going to be more of a three-quarter ball head. You're going to be aimed right about there. Yeah, I think that's more like it. Always forget on these seven-foot diamonds are a little bit different. Uh, 222. So because we had a sharper angle, is it the one to three? Yeah, on a smaller on a smaller table like this, yeah. um, coming at this diamond on a nine foot table that would have been the second diamond. But on a shorter on a smaller table, kind of, yeah. So your aim is actually going to be right about here. So this is the center of the ball. Mm -hmm. This is a half ball hit. Mm -hmm. Right in between those two is a three quarter hit. That's the aim line for your cue ball. High right. And one of the things that um, that you have a tendency to do, and this yeah. happens to most people, so it's fine. When you're shooting, your brain wants to fix it. You're hitting not center of the cue ball. Yeah. Oh, your, your brain. Your brain wants to fix it. Okay. Um, so like I. So what you're doing is you're cheating the pocket a little bit. Yeah. Because your aim is actually going more towards the center. Okay. And it doesn't have a whole lot of fog. Uh, so. Um, there are things that you can do to kind of train yourself, but for now, just try to focus on where you're going to hit that ball and trust that the chalk is going to do its job. Okay. Right? You're not going to miss Q. Just go ahead and just go straight through that point. Okay. okay? Sure. It takes a little bit of uh, trust. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know I was doing that. So. So it, it's a tendency for a lot of a lot of people if they have trouble with their draw shot. Yeah. Um, have a tendency. It's because you'll start bottom and then they'll end up in center or something. Right. Because right. they'll end up raising the tip. Because they're afraid they're going to scoop the ball. Uh, it's that muscle memory. You know, it, it's happened to them before, so their their brain is trying to fix that. Did you, know? you notice that? It, did you notice that's kind of coming off flat? Because of. So what you what ends up happening is it's your you're trying to go high right mm -hmm. and then your when you stroke your your tip is going back towards the side. Try something different. Try this. I want you to shoot this straight into the pocket. But what I want you to do okay. is I want you to hit that strike right there. I want you to aim right at the edge of that strike. Right at the edge of the strike. Okay. Okay. With some speed. Okay. okay. Straight at the strike. Looks good. Don't worry about what happened. It, that will happen because, because of uh, deflection. So. I'll put this a little closer, just so we go in the pocket. But what I want, what I want you to see is the spin of this ball. So make sure you have good chalk. That's <clears throat> what I need to see. So I want you to aim there. You go, just like that. You just follow through. See that spin? Yeah. That's the kind of spin you should have when it's coming around the table. Don't be afraid to put that in the shot. Okay. You can hit a little bit high, but you're going to put that in the shot. Not bad. So that's a really good drill for you to try. Should really be a little more follow. Okay. You want you want it.
hit it high enough that it's gonna it's not gonna just kind of you can kind of tell because when you hit it it just loses all the speed mm-hmm. is right. it because i'm not falling through or um no i think it's just your brain is automatically adjusting okay and that just takes some some what you might do is some do some of those side spin ones i was showing you but also do some follow-up ones okay you can take the stripe the stripe is a um, it's a really good tool it helps with a lot of things but if you put this thing dead flat the very top of the stripe is about the highest that you can go for follow. Okay. And the bottom of the stripe is about the max you can go for, for draw. Okay. Okay. Really good way to train your brain into just hitting it and trusting the shot. Okay. All right. We have about 10 minutes left, so I want to I want to go over this thing real quick. Yeah. So this is progressive practice. Yeah. And what this does is it helps you to figure out exactly where you are when it comes to uh, your drills, these drills, okay? So these drills are going to be uh, the stop shot, the follow shot, a draw shot, and a cut shot, yeah. okay? For now, I would focus probably on these two, okay. the stop shot and the follow shot, okay? If you want to go on to other things, by all means, go for it. But I'm going to show you these two, okay? So, and... If you're having trouble figuring out how to do the draw shot or the follow shot, use a stripe as your cue ball and use the limits of the stripe. Okay? But what these drills are going to do, first of all, the first one is the stop shot. What this is telling you is your object ball is going to be right at the, at the point of that pocket. Yep. Your cue ball is going to start at position one and move up to two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're going to do a stop shot. So this is where we had talked about before, where the amount of speed you use and the amount of draw that you use depends on how far away you are. You have to kind of figure out the two of them together to figure out the stop shot. Okay? If you're shooting it from here, it's just a, a simple center ball shot. Pretty easy. Okay? So if your first shot starts here. Actually, this is right here. Your first shot starts there. Yeah. You have to stop the cue ball inside this one diamond square. Okay. You cannot touch the end of it. Okay. Oh, no, the cue ball. Right. So, stop shot. Easy as that. Yeah. Ball there, move back to the position two. You have to stop. You might have to get a little lower, or if you want to, just hit center. Whatever works. But try different things because it's just going to start training your muscle memory to. Harder ones are going to be back here, five, six, seven. Yeah. So here, you're going to hit with draw, medium, medium to hard speed. There you go. It's inside the square. A nine foot table, the square is bigger, but the disc is farther. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So that's the stop shot, and the way of progressive. The way a progressive drill goes is you're going to shoot 10 shots. Okay. First one's going to start wherever you feel comfortable starting. You don't have to start with one. If you feel like you can make one and two easy every single time, skip past it. Or if you found that four is your is your score most of the time, which is your 50% point, you can start at four. Okay. So let's say we start at three. You make it. Four. And they don't have to be right on the rail. The whole idea is just a stop shot, right? So four, you make it. Five, you miss. Yeah. Okay. After your tenth shot, when you shoot your tenth shot, your tenth shot is here. If you make it, your final score is seven. Mm-hmm. If you miss it, your final score is four. Okay. Right. So you shoot it, you move it, you score. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the stop shot drill. Mm-hmm. Very simple. Progressive drills are all exactly the same in that. You take 10 shots, you move according to whether you make it or move it, yep. and then on your 10th shot, after your 10th shot, you score. Okay. So the follow shot is similar to what we were sh- what I was showing you before, which is these two balls, one diamond apart. Now they're both going to move at the same time. Yeah. So shot number one starts here. Shot number two is here. Shot number three. Whichever one your, your object ball is on. So one, two, three, 
And the goal is, you can put them wherever you want, but the goal is to put the cue ball inside this area. Now you can see the gray area. Yeah. See that? Okay. So if you wanted to, you could put yourself at a slight angle like that. As long as you don't hit this rail, mm -hmm. as long hitting this rail is fine, as long as you keep it in this. So the ultimate goal is try to try to plaster it right to this rail because that gives you some leeway. So go ahead and try this one shot. So this is a three. Gotta make the points there. <laughs> so then you would move down to a two. But the follow is perfect. Okay. Right, so, right there, right. so make sure you make the ball. You have to make the ball for it to be successful. And then and then just follow it down to that area. Good. So that's the follow. The draw. Is actually not too difficult for this is level one. There's five levels. Okay. Five levels like pros. Okay. Johnny Archer would have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about those too much. But what you're gonna do here, I think it starts there, right? The draw shot. Yeah. So the draw shot is just like the stop shot. Yeah. The object ball stays here, the cue ball moves. Yeah. And you have to draw back past this boundary. And draw is one seat. Draw is low, right? So I'm gonna give it here. Actually, you're not gonna control this. Right. So you're gonna hit. Okay. So what you want to do is you want you want. Let's just clean this out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So your bridge can be on the tip. And you want your you want your cue as level as possible. So lower your bridge as much as you can. And you want to hit nice and low without touching the table. And just almost there. Not too high enough. It's good to come back back across that bend. So yeah, I feel like sometimes when I draw, I'll be hitting down on the ball. Mm -hmm. So. I need to be in level as possible. As level as you can, yes. Okay. We don't have we don't have much time left, okay. but um, if you decide to come back, I can show you some other bridges that yeah, help you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, keep this bridge as low as possible. If you can use a closed bridge, it'd be better. Yeah. Try this. Bend these two fingers into a fist. Okay. This one cut out. These two bit in okay. like this. Oh, okay. okay. Now put your thumb on that. It's called a fist bridge. Okay. Um, Keep your thumb on the on the cord, and want it to be nice and low. Bottom of that straight. Okay. Don't and trust it. Just trust it. You don't have to hit it hard. All wants to come back. Hit it low. Doesn't have to have a lot of power. There's my fist bridge, right? Go nice and low. That's what it should look like. If you want to try those, my suggestion is to focus on the stop and shots. If you want to work on your draw shot, go for it. If uh, then you know if you have if you need work on it, then uh, you know we can definitely you know, we can definitely work with you. That's the progressive drills. These are cut shots. If you want to try those too, you just make sure you position the ball in the right spot, like it tells you. In this one, it's stationary. Okay. It's uh, I think one inch off the rail and a half diamond, mm -hmm. and then you're in the middle of the table on the diamond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Just cutting the ball in the corner. Got it. And then you take your scores. Where the score sheet are different. Mm -hmm. And these are all removable, so you can um, you can make some photocopies or whatever you want to do. Yeah. I also have this in PDF format. So if you want, I'll, do, I'll send that to you as well. Yeah. I'll email that to you. Set number one. 
A, B, C, and D. You write your scores. The total is the total of all of those, mm -hmm. and the score is that total divided by four. Okay. You get up to like a four yeah. or a five, okay. then you move on to um, set number two, which are much harder. They get harder. So they're the same shots. Draw a shot, and now your follow shot, you have to give them that score okay. without, without scratching. This one you have to pull back. Um, or this one is the stop shot, but it's a small. The range is smaller, right? right? And the draw shot you have to draw back to where the cue ball is. Oh. Instead of just coming back one diamond, yeah, you yeah. got to draw back back to the cue ball. Yeah, two. From seven, making it and drawing back. Oh my God, it's hard. So, um, those are harder. You know, definitely don't want to be doing those right now. Yeah. Start with these. Okay. And then, um, yeah. And if you have any questions at all, just feel free to email me or um, you can text. I think you have. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you prefer. I can do email too. Just your phone. Um, well, the text number that we use is her cell phone, so oh. it's probably better if it's probably better if we use email. Yeah. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. I'll, I'll help you out. Okay. That's okay. Good. Um, yeah, and then. You know, if you want to come back, and I would recommend if you do want to come back to, to work on these things, try to work on them once or twice a week. Yeah. Um, get some good practice time in uh, yeah. all the stuff that we talked about. Um, the one thing that you can do, especially once you get your own stick, yeah. Um, there's a, a drill that you can do with a bottle. Use a beer bottle. Yeah. And what you do is that's. That's basically the level of a cue ball right there. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you just put the, the tip right there. That's your that's your contact point. Mm -hmm. And then you just practice going in and out without touching the ball. And that just, all that's doing is it's training your muscle memory to stroke nice and straight. So if you're having a problem shooting straight, then, then that's the best thing. Yep. All right. How do we feel? Uh, I feel good. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> but, uh, you feel like uh, we covered enough? Do you feel like uh, we covered too much? Is it... No, I feel like it's a right amount. Uh, especially spent a lot on the fundamentals. I didn't know I was doing the wrist thing and mm -hmm. uh, some other stuff. Right. Um, hopefully next time, get this done. Uh, we can focus on. Like... I'll probably come in tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you can focus on like spin, mm -hmm. like uh, right hand English, mm -hmm. left hand English, because I think we did draw, stop, follow, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, we did everything vertical. Yeah. Yes. The the side spin can be tricky, and there's a lot of a lot to uh, yeah. a lot to unwrap there. But you can use a strike again. Yeah. Um, the strike is basically the maximum that you can go. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so if you want to just practice using English. And also seeing how it comes off the rail from different angles, so that you get used to the idea of the of the ball, you know, yeah, the way that it reacts. That will will that will start working toward, you know, figuring out how to position the cue ball and, and get it get it to move around the table. Yeah. Right but ultimately, the goal is to not have to do that. The goal is to pick patterns that leave the cue ball uh, without having to travel too much. Okay. So, right. But that's all. That's down the line. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Um, payment. Yeah. Um, we can. Uh, we can take a credit card. We can do. Um, do you have You guys have to. Do we yeah. do Zelle? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oops. Take your phone number to do it for this. I just my cell number here. So let me go to 10, 925, 356.